All right, let's look at one last example. Let's do one with a little bit of trigonometry to it. That'll be fun. Uh, so what we should we know about here is that uh, the domain, right? The domain of cosine is all real numbers. The domain of sine is all real numbers. So the only issue is the denominator. If you look at the denominator, 2 plus sine of x, does that ever equal 0? Well, subtract 2 from both sides. You get sine of x equals negative 2. And I'm going to stop you right there. Sine has to sit between negative 1 and 1, positive 1. It can never equal negative 2. So what we actually get is that its domain is going to be all real numbers. But unlike the other graphs we've seen, sine are this, this function is periodic by the nature of the trigonometric functions here, right? And so it's going to be, in fact, periodic on 2 pi. Because cosine repeats itself every 2 pi, sine repeats itself every 2 pi. If we can just graph it on the interval pi... Uh, we're going to, on the interval, excuse me, 2 pi, from 0 to 2 pi, we could be just fine. Absolutely just fine with that. So we, we can do something like that. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to talk about? So the next thing to do, we can think about intercepts. Think of intercepts. What would the y-intercept be? f of 0 equals cosine of 0 over 2 plus sine of 0. Cosine of 0 is a 1. Sine of 0 is a 0, so we get 1 half as our y-intercept. In terms of x-intercepts, you get cosine of x that sits above 2 plus sine of x. When does that equal 0? Well, to find an x-intercept, it only matters what happens in the numerator. Cosine of x equals 0. And think about our standard trigonometry. Cosine will equal 0 exactly at, uh, let's see, at pi halves. Right, cosine is equal to 0 at pi halves, but also at 3 pi halves, 5 pi halves, and it will repeat itself. Every Again, it's, it's periodic in the nature there. We're going to get x-intercepts over and over and over again. Uh, in terms of discontinuities, cosine, sine are all continuous. The only way there could have been a discontinuity is if we divided by 0, uh, but like we said earlier, that's not a possibility. Uh, it was periodic where he talked about the symmetry there. So let's talk about in behavior. Well, for periodic functions, there really is no such thing as in behavior because it just repeats itself over and over and over and over and wait for it over again. Um, so asking the limit as X goes to infinity versus uh, negative infinity, it, that, that's not going to give us any information there whatsoever. So we can actually jump directly to our derivatives. Uh, let's calculate the first derivative. By the quotient rule, you can see the quotient rule is our best friend in this section. Uh, by the quotient rule, we get 2 plus sine of x times the derivative of cosine, which is a negative sine. Do make sure you put parentheses there so you make sure that you're taking uh, the correct multiplication there and you don't accidentally subtract it. Then minus cosine, oh, I should have planned ahead here, uh, times the derivative of 2 plus sine, which is a cosine. And this all sits above 2 plus sine x squared. Uh, don't multiply out the denominator. Let me move down to give myself some more room. And so if we distribute the negative sine onto these two pieces right here, uh, we're going to end up with a negative 2 sine of x. We're going to have a negative sine squared. And then we also have a negative cosine squared. And this sits above 2 plus sine x squared. Now, since everything in the numerator was divisible by negative 1, I'm going to factor out that negative 1. And so we get 2 sine x. And now my, my trigonometry sense is tingling, right? You look at things like sine squared and a cosine squared. Uh, we know this comes together to give us 1. This is the Pythagorean identity. Uh, so we're going to get 2 sine of x plus 1. And this sits above the 2 plus sine of x. Now, despite the fact you see a 2 on the top and the bottom and a sine on top and bottom, there's no cancellation that goes on there. Um, this is our simplified derivative. To find the critical numbers, we look at what, what makes this thing equal to 0. And in which case, we set 2 sine of x plus 1 equal to uh, 2 sine of x plus 1 equal to 0. Uh, this gives us sine of x equals negative 1 half. And so think about those unit circle diagrams that we've known from the past. 
if you have to. When does sine equal one half? This will happen in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. Uh, the first one will be 30 degrees, which you can repent of that and switch it to radians if you need to, right? Um, which case we should then get, I'm sorry, it's a, it's gonna be a negative one half, isn't it? Uh, because I forgot something, didn't I? Oh, let's just pause for one moment because we have a negative sign right there. I shouldn't make any bit of a difference. Um, we factor out the negative out of everything. I'm trying to make sure I didn't make a, uh, I didn't make a calculation error anywhere. Oh, okay, I did. I did make a mistake somewhere. Oh no, it, it, it was right. I'm sorry. Uh, we see right here we have sine is negative one half. So let me actually try this unit circle argument one more time. We're not interested in when it's equal to one half. We're interested in when it's equal to negative one half. So that's actually going to be below down here. So we're talking about an angle in the third quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. Uh, so this will reference to 30 degrees. We're actually looking at uh, x is 7 pi sixth and also 11 pi sixth. Now it'll repeat itself, but this will give us the this will give us the critical numbers in a single period. And so let's then take the second derivative here. Um, if we take the second derivative, again, there, there is a calculation going on here. Uh, for the sake of time, I think I'm going to skip over it. The details can be found in the lecture notes here, but if you take the second derivative by the quotient rule again, you get two times cosine of x uh, times sine of x minus one. And this sits above a two plus sine of x, and then the denominator is cubed, all right? So the PPIs here are gonna be the things that make the numerator go to zero, because there's nothing in the denominator will make, the, there's no choice of x that makes the denominator go to zero. So we have to worry about when does cosine go to zero, all right, when does cosine go to zero? And we mentioned that before, those are our x-intercepts. Those happen at pi halves and three pi halves. But then we also have to worry about when does sine of x minus one equals zero. That would happen when sine equals one, uh, which would happen at pi halves. Like so. Uh, and again, this repeats itself, but this is, gives us all the critical numbers for a, uh, for a single period. Uh, did I forget anything there? No, no, I think we're good. And so now let's build a sign chart using these critical numbers and these PPIs. I'm gonna put it below our picture right here. Uh, so there was a lot of stuff. Let's keep track of it here. And so what did, what do we have to worry about? So we kind of, kind of we're gonna do one period. So from zero. Uh, so we had a we had a PPI at pi halves. We had a critical number at seven pi sixth, we had a PPI at three pi halves, and then finally we had another critical number at 11 pi sixth, all right? And so, and then this then stops itself at two pi. It will repeat itself, but that's all that we have to do. We're gonna get tons and tons of solutions otherwise. And so if we come to the second derivative, Let's take a look at it again real quick. Our second derivative. Uh, this might be a useful situation to use test points where you plug in specific numbers in these intervals right here. You can always use the factorizations of these things, um, but however you want to do it, there's ways to do it. Uh, you're going to end up with, you get a negative between zero and pi halves. You get a positive between pi halves and seven pi sixth. You're going to get a positive between seven pi six and three pi halves. You get a negative between three pi halves and 11 pi sixth, and you get a negative again from 11 pi sixth to two pi. And so what this tells us right here is that we have a, uh, we have a point of inflection at pi halves, a point of inflection at three pi halves. We have a local minimum 
at 7 pi halves, and we have a local maximum at 11 pi sixth. And so let's try to put all this information together. So we had intercepts at pi halves and at 3 pi halves. We had a inflection point at 7 pi sixth, uh, which is going to be right here on the graph. And then we had another inflection point at uh, 11 pi six, which is almost 2 pi. Right here. So here's our 2 pi. Here's our 0. And so if we connect the dots, our y-intercept before was 1 half, wasn't it? So if we connect the dots, we're going to get this one right here. So let me kind of explain what's happening here. Uh, you get an inflection when you are between zero and, and pi halves, it should be concave up. When you're between pi halves and three pi halves, it should be not three pi halves. Uh, no, that, that's right, three pi halves. Uh, you should be concave upward again. I'm sorry, I said concave up before when I meant down. Let me fix that. This is concave down right here, concave up, and then concave down again. We have a maximum right here. Sorry, this is a minimum. We have a maximum right here. And this is what the picture is going to do, and it'll replicate itself over and over again. It'll just, and in this because the blue one just gives us one period, and it just kind of repeats itself over and over and over and over again, like so. And this will be repeat. And so if you look at a computer generated image, we see exactly this. The one in yellow is the period we first start off with and the one in green then gives us the what it looks like over and over and over again. And so the examples in this one were much more challenging than the last lecture, and I do understand that. But if you're patient with yourself, you can get some really accurate drawings of these curve sketches. Uh, and that actually concludes our lecture for today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments below. Uh, there are There is a link to the lecture notes for this lecture in the description below. Uh, feel free to use those in your studies. See you next time. Bye.